Hello everyone. In the previous video, I showed you all this circuit right here. Um, it's just the simplest, the most bare bones kind of a lab bench power supply that you can build with uh, voltage and current adjustments. Okay. And in the last part of that video, I talked about how this circuit has uh, absolutely no protection and how that's a bit of a problem because hey, this is a lab power supply. So you just have no control over what this circuit's going to be powering. This circuit will be powering a highly inductive load that as soon as you um, shut it off um, could induce a voltage spike here in the output terminals. It could be a highly capacitive load, so if you just turn off the power to your uh, power supply, this voltage can collapse faster than this one and then <laughs> this is going to turn negative compared to the voltage here which could damage your past transistors if a uh, current starts flowing backwards through it you could try to inject a voltage here let's say you have a, a 12 volt battery here and you set your voltage here to uh, 9 volts this node right here it's going to have a higher voltage and uh, all sorts of stuff like that, okay, that's uh, that's undesirable. And in this video, I'm going to address those circuits and I'm going to uh, uh, show basically like everything that you can do to uh, uh, ruggedize this circuit, all right? So let's jump right into that, okay? So this is the circuit that I came up with. Okay, it's the same circuit as before, but now we've got uh, some protection added to it okay so let's uh let's describe this in more detail let's begin with the uh, simplest form of protection that you can add to literally um any circuit that has a, a, a an open output an output to the world okay and it's also an input you can you truly can use this on inputs as well and it's used a lot which is just uh, this pair of um, diodes right here okay you see this a lot in the input of uh, digital ICs you see you're going to see this in input of op amps and all sorts of uh, ICs because this is a great clamping circuit okay in this case I've used Chotkey diodes just uh, uh, so that uh, they uh, come into effect faster okay so this works very simply. Let's say you put a, a load here, a, a, a um, voltage here that's higher than the V plus that you have your supply. Let's say your V plus is 20 volts, or maybe it's just 10 volts because you just want a, a, a zero to a eight volt supply or something like that. And you plug into something here like a battery that has a higher voltage than what you have here. So this just provides a nice path for current to flow through there and hopefully <laughs> uh, mitigate any problem that you might have here uh, with voltages in your input. Uh, remember that uh, this is just a dead short to your V plus rail. So for example, if you put a battery here, it's just going to short out the battery with that rail and all that's going to, um, uh, to limit that current is just the uh, dynamic resistance of this diode, so <laughs> keep that in mind. This is also here to mitigate uh, capacitive and inductive loads. Okay, so any in a sort of a case where this voltage drops faster than the voltage here at the output, as it would be if you had a capacitor here in the output, it's just going to uh, uh, shunt that voltage to here. All right. This same thing, if this voltage tries to go negative in regards to your ground, it's just going to provide a dead short path uh, for current to flow and maybe stabilize your circuit. This is also very useful in this case for inductive loads. Okay. So yeah, this is very simple. Okay, just if the voltage here is higher than your V plus, this shunts it up. If your voltage here is lower than your ground, it just shunts down. Simple stuff. This is just basically free and you should put it on in all on literally every output of a, a device that you have and also every input okay if it's a, an, a, an input that the user can uh, interact with this is just a, a good insurance okay 
Uh, so if you have a power amplifier or anything like that, hey, this is this is a really good circuit for that. All right. Now, the second thing that I've added, let's just look at this circuit right here. So it's just this uh, transistor here and this resistor here. Okay, we've talked about this circuit on the um, series pass overview video, which I'm going to uh, link up here in a card. Uh, this is just a current limiting circuit. This is your last resort. Let's say that this thing is just you're drawing way too much current here on your output. Maybe you have uh, bypassed this resistor here by uh, connecting uh, your load directly to the ground point, not the uh, load minus point. So, and you overload the circuit and stuff like that. This is what's going to uh, protect it. Okay. Uh, in this case, it's set up for uh, 600 milliamps. I was just uh, simulating this circuit right here. So I just put a, a low value just to test this out. Okay. Uh, by the way, all these files, the LT Spice simulations, um, I'll have them down in the, down in the video description. So if you want to check those out and uh, play around with this circuit, I highly suggest you to do so. So just go down there and download the file. Now, in a, in a real circuit, this is going to be a, a, a much lower value of resistor. Basically, what you want is just to set some uh, a margin, let's say 30% uh, above your uh, the rated uh, current output of the supply. Let's say um, the supply was supposed to have a maximum current capability of a uh, two amps. Then just uh, uh, calculate this resistor right here so that this uh, circuit is going to limit your current at uh, 2.5 amps. Okay, so this is just your last resort. Like uh, if this transistor goes short or whatever. Okay, there's a lot of things can happen. Okay, um, so the way to calculate this resistor is very simple. All that you got to do, you just uh, uh, use Ohm's law. Okay, so if you have, if you want a 2.5 amps as your trigger current for this circuit, all you have to do is just uh, put a 0 0.65, which is the VB of this transistor here divided by that uh, 2.5 amps and that's going to give you the resistor that you should put in here okay so that's the uh, current limiting part done now the other circuit that i've added here this is very uh, um it's not as usual as you might think in a supply but all high-end supplies have something like this okay so what this is, is a crowbar. It's a very uh, different sort of crowbar circuit. But it's here to protect against um, over voltage situations. Okay. That doesn't mean that uh, this isn't a, a, an over voltage uh, uh, circuit. Okay, this is an over voltage protection circuit. Just this uh, diode right here. But this is basically a, an over voltage condition, an over voltage uh, protection circuit that's based on your set voltage. All right. So basically what this is going to do is as soon as this uh, uh, voltage node right here rises, uh, basically two VBEs above your set voltage, your, not your set voltage here, but actually the voltage that you want on the output. Uh, this circuit's just going to shunt all the current that it can to bring that this voltage here down to that level. Okay. So how we can think of this? Let's say we've set this voltage here. Let's say one volt here, so ten volts out. And uh, if there was, uh, for example, uh, twelve volts. Uh, being applied here, being forced in this node. Okay, you plugged in a a, a fully charged uh, 12 volt cell, uh, 12 volt battery. That's at a uh, 13.5. Okay, this diode it's not going to conduct because that uh, 
13 volts is not higher than your V plus. But <laughs> this circuit is going to do something very simple because um, what's going to happen is this voltage is going to be higher than your control voltage because as soon as this voltage goes above that uh, 10 volts that you've set uh, by using the 1 volt here, this op amp, it's just going to uh, uh, shunt this voltage to the, its output to ground because the, the output of an op amp uh, it's just a class B stage, so it looks uh, kind of like this, okay? So this is usually what's in the output of an op amp, okay? So this is your output, all right? So what's going to happen is as soon as uh, it detects that this voltage is higher than what you've set in here, it's just going to uh, turn this off, and by turning it off, it's going to uh, um, turn on this uh, transistor right here, which theoretically should shunt the voltage at this node, okay? So, since th these are PNP devices, uh, when this voltage at the base is lower, uh, it's a VB, in this case two VB, since this is a Darlington pair, lower, then the voltage at their emitters, they start to conduct. So in this case, hey, this voltage, let's say this goes to zero volts, and uh, you have uh, this node uh, right here at uh, 12 volts, it's just going to shunt this, uh, this, uh, the, volt, the current through your, this pass element right here, and it's going to try to do whatever you can to bring this voltage down. And as soon as it uh, goes down to, let's say, 10 volts, then this circuit kicks in and it starts providing current to your load. Uh, in case of a battery, <laughs> be mindful of that, that it's just going to short out your battery. <laughs> and that's not something that you want. So uh, this isn't a, a, a very uh, good circuit to have on your... Uh, um, power supply unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, one advantage of uh, putting this in your power supply is that you add another quadrant to your supply, so your supply can't only supply current but it can also sink current. And uh, most high-end power supplies are capable of that. It, it's just this that you see right here. So it's not being used as a crowbar but more as a current sink. All right, and uh, yeah, so that, that, that was a, an overview of this circuit. This is just here as a, an added bonus for you to understand that these circuits exist, okay? But uh, it's not commonly used in this way, all right? So uh, another thing that can happen is, let's say you're, uh, you set the voltage here to zero, and you plug in any sort of battery or something here, it's just going to shut that battery. It's going to short it out. Okay. So be mindful of that. This is going to <laughs> do whatever it can uh, to uh, control this voltage here so that uh, it respects your uh, set voltage. Okay, so this is a kind of a dangerous circuit to have on your uh, power supply if you don't know what you're doing. But if you know what you're doing, having a, a two quadrant supply is really a great addition and something that basically no other, uh, only really high-end supply, lab supplies have, all right? And uh, you can also just uh, make the uh, this quadrant completely uh, um, controllable, okay? You can <laughs> make a, a, a circuit here that you control this voltage here and you can maybe just, for example, um, enable or disable the circuit something that you can do. You can just uh, have a switch or uh, uh, some kind of electronic switch to just tie uh, this node right here to your load plus and then you disable the circuit and then if you want uh, to have a two, a two quadrant supply you can just flip the switch, uh, you open this connection here and now you have a, a perfectly fine uh, two quadrant supply, so that's not an added bonus if you have this circuit in place, okay? Now, um, <laughs> this sort of protection, it's a pretty simple sort of protection, but since we're dealing with only uh, low voltages, that's all you need, okay? We even talked about this over here, Now, 
when we design the high voltage power supply that uh, I have plans for, uh, we are going to uh, take protections to a, a whole nother level because in that case you're dealing with uh, high voltages and not just that but in our circuit we'll have lo a low voltage side and a high voltage side so we'll need to put a lot of protection on the control circuitry of the uh, high voltage pass elements because it's going to be a uh, the, the output voltage is going to be set by a very low voltage so if <laughs> any sort of a, a high voltage in your uh, a B plus comes into the input it's just going to destroy the whole thing and now that's not something that's uh, not okay so we're going to be talking about adding uh, circuits like this basically everywhere and uh, also it's going to be a discrete op amp so again hey we'll need to put a lot of protection just to make sure nothing uh, bad happens but uh, for low voltages like this this is more than enough for whatever you want okay now, just as a, a, a something, I think this video is pretty quick, pretty quick for, the, <laughs> for this channel's um, uh, metrics. <laughs> uh, I just want to talk about uh, uh, crowbar circuits a bit, uh, since this this is a, a, a sort of crowbar, but this is more of a, a current sync circuit. But let's say you have a, you're a fixed rail or something like that and you want to protect it from over voltages maybe you want to protect uh, this uh, node right here from over voltages hey <laughs> whatever you need i just want to uh, show this circuit right here so that you can uh, uh, learn more so let's say that you have your uh, your rail here that you want to uh, control okay let's call it the plus so a crowbar is usually uh, designed like this, okay? So you have a voltage divider rate like this, okay? And this usually feeds into a, a TL431 because, hey, if you're going to be designing something like this, at least uh, make it uh, adjustable, okay? Now, this goes down to another resistor okay uh, by the way let me just uh, write this down so this is a TL431 that's horrible but hey you get the idea yeah these resistors here since this is going to be a variable voltage crowbar these resistors here you just have to look at the data sheet for the TL431 and there you're going to uh, learn how to calculate this resistor so that uh, this becomes a zener at a, a, a predefined uh, a set voltage okay so let's say this is a 5 volt rail and you want to clamp this voltage as soon as it reaches I don't know like a 5.2 okay let's say this is going to power USB in that case <laughs> the devices that you're going to plug in here they are very sensitive to voltages so adding a crowbar circuit like this is just uh, a must okay and then you just set this, these resistors so that as soon as a uh, this uh, node right here goes up to a 5.2 let's say it just shunts that okay so then what you have to do is you just uh, pull a little node like this and you can either put a transistor here or you can put a a, a triac if because uh, then it also happens if uh, um, your voltage goes a uh, negative but hey i'm just going to put a uh, transistor in here so it's just like this okay and there it is okay this is a, a, a classic crowbar circuit this way uh, this voltage this uh, voltage node right here it's completely safe you can just be sure that it's not going to overshoot it's not going to go higher than it should okay so <laughs> that was just a, a bit of a, a tangent there just a wanted to share that with you all right so yeah uh, this is it uh, I I think this was a, a, a quicker video than the other ones I hope so I don't think I, I rambled too much in this one but hey now you know how to uh, build build protection circuits for power supplies and as far as whatever you know a bit about uh, crowbar circuits and all that and uh, yeah 
I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a, a, a it wasn't very much a, a, not scripted. I don't script my videos, but uh, it wasn't very planned. I just uh, thought about doing this and uh, just went with it. So yeah, this was it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this one. It wasn't uh, there, I don't think there was a lot of information. I just want to share this because a lot of people don't know about the, these sorts of things and they've never seen it. And it's always good to get uh, beginners. Um, uh, interested and uh, know more about these circuits that they can just this, these building blocks that they can just apply uh, to any circuit that they want okay so yeah I hope you've enjoyed this one and uh, if you have any suggestions any sort of feedback hey please leave them in the comments below and uh, yeah this is it so <laughs> thanks for watching bye